Hey foodies, welcome to Foodie Friday. You guys, today I am both excited and nervous about this video. And by the time you watch this video, it's actually gonna be Foodie Friday on Saturday because I still have to edit and it's already dark outside. You guys, I've been busy working hard in my kitchen to present to you the best that I can with this recipe that I'm making. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, my name is Keisha, and this is my channel, Saving Greens Homestead. And every Friday I try to bring to you a new recipe or some way of using um, what we grow or what I grow in my garden. So uh, today I'm bringing you, I, well, I have made a video in my previous video I said to you guys that I'm harvesting, what was it, tomato leaves and peppers and, and green tomatoes. And I told you I was gonna have something different for you to do with your green tomatoes. And you know, usually at the end of the season, we all will just take our green tomatoes and make fried green tomatoes or even salsa with it. And so that's what I'm making today. But the twist is, I'm making salsa verde, but with all dried ingredients. So, in all honesty, you guys, and just being transparent with you, this was my this is my third take today <laughs> because I failed. These are the tomato leaves right here, and all I did was dehydrate these, and I'm gonna use these to season my food like I would use dried parsley or dried basil or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna use this to season food and stuff with, and that's why I harvested those um, tomato leaves. So anyways, and you guys, I have a video that I made all explaining the benefits of eating tomato leaves, using it in tea. It's in my playlist, my Tea Tuesday playlist, but I talk all about how this is safe to eat and how people all over the world eat this. And I give you some benefits too and some other uses for it that you might not have known. So check out that video, I'll put the link in the description. As you saw in the opening part of this video, I harvested quite a few green tomatoes and I still have a whole lot more to use. So my goal today is just is just to show you what I'm gonna do with them but the catch is this is my first time doing this <laughs> that's why I'm nervous <laughs> so what I have here I have the tomatoes um, and they're all powdered I have limes that I dried and powdered I have garlic that I dried and powdered and these garlics are from my garden the tomatoes are from my garden and peppers that I flaked and powdered, and these are from my garden too. I also have some cilantro that's dried and flaked that I bought from the store because I don't have any cilantro growing right now, and some onion powder that I bought from the store because I don't have any onions growing in my garden right now, or else I would have dehydrated all of those too. <laughs> and so today, I am gonna make some salsa verde for you. Some green salsa, green tomato salsa. Now I have another video where I showed you how I powdered the red tomatoes and used those, reconstituted those to make um, some tomato sauce with those. And it turned out great. So I'm hoping that this also will turn out the same way. Um, it's the same premise. It's just powdered, dried powdered tomatoes that I'm gonna reconstitute in here. And I'm gonna add all the ingredients that you would for a, a green salsa or salsa verde and see how it turns out. <laughs> you guys, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Okay, you guys, I am back and I had my son try that first batch that I made and he agreed with me that the lime skin, uh, the zest of the lime that I left on there, the skin was just 
too bitter and it was overpowering the flavor of the salsa verde so he said everything else tasted good except for that so I decided to start over um, and you know I had struggled with whether I should show you guys you know that whole part and my failure with that <laughs> or if I should just do another bowl and just you know act like nothing ever happened and I guess for um, some people just to act like nothing ever happened or that it turned out perfect um, would have been it, it's nice for them but not for me I'd like to be honest with you guys so when I tell you something tastes good and especially something that I'm making taste good I want you to believe me when I say it <laughs> and not this is not like a a production of sorts like I'm not in some kind of Hollywood studio shooting this this is just in my home in my kitchen with me and a camera <laughs> talking to you guys and so finally finally you guys I think I got it down in on how to make salsa verde uh, with all the regular ingredients but using all dried ingredients and the only thing that we're gonna do to this is add water and lime juice that's it so tonight I'm making chili verde pork chops for my family and I've already made the rice I made a, a Mexican rice um, to go with it and so I am gonna show you guys how I'm gonna put this together and then I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna add it to my pork chops and then I will taste it and give you my review on the finished product but you guys this is so different and that's why I was so nervous about making this video because <laughs> it's not something that you normally do but I knew that if this worked out then it would alleviate some space issues that I have right now in my pantry because it would eliminate me using the canning jars and I can just put these in airtight pouches and store them away and it'll be a lot easier for space wise now first what I'm going to do is I am going to take my tomato powder here and add it to my bowl So I got my tomato powder in there first, and it's not a lot, it's just a little bit. And I'm gonna add in my garlic, uh, my peppers. Now, when I made this earlier, my son was like, Mom, you gotta make it spicier than that. I don't know about that. Cause you know, I don't wanna hurt myself or anything, but I guess I'm gonna be making it a little bit spicier see how it turns out. I'm going to use all the rest of this in there. And then I'm going to add in my cilantro. You guys, I love cilantro, so I might just go a little overboard with this and just use the rest of this. <laughs> And then I'm going to add in my onion powder. Now, I'm going to add in the limes later. But this is a step that's a must. I am going to use boiling water to reconstitute this. Um, using the boiling water is going to do two things. It's going to help meld all the flavors together as it reconstitutes but it's also going to cook through um, the tomato and the peppers and the onions because like when you make salsa verde you either start it you use the green tomatoes or the tomatillos and you either roast them in the oven or you boil them um, on, in some water on the stove and so in that way they're cooked and with it being powdered, just using some boiled water will do the same thing. So I'm gonna get that from my Insta Hot Picky. 
where it gives me instant boiling water. My husband loves when I mention that. <laughs> so I'm going to add this boiling water to this and give it a good mix. I'm going to put a little bit more water because as it's thickening, I'm noticing as it's thickening a little bit much. Let me put a little bit more water in there. Okay, that's good. Okay, and then I am going to let this sit and um, marry, let the flavors marry and let it reconstitute. So I'm going to let this sit for about 20 minutes. I'm show you how this looks up close. Can you see that? And the consistency that it is. It looks really good and it smells good too. So I'm just gonna let this sit. Okay, you guys, I let this sit for a little bit. It's still a little warm, but I wanted to add some of these limes to it. And taste the seasoning. Make sure the seasoning is good. It's definitely spicier. Like how my son wants it. And everything hasn't fully reconstituted, but the flavor is good. I love it. I mean, this is the best batch I've made. <laughs> And it's my third batch. <laughs> so, but that's good. I might add just a little bit more salt. You guys know me when I cook, I add my seasoning in little by little um, just to make sure that I don't over season it. Because if you over season it, you can't take any of that back. <laughs> but, Oh man, this is really good. Okay. Ooh. Okay, proud of myself with that one. <laughs> you guys, I was so nervous. Cause I'm like, I already told you guys to ex be expecting something on Friday for Foodie Friday. And if it just turned out horrible, I just would have felt so bad. <laughs> but this is actually really good. It took some tweaking, but I think I got it down. Now, the longer I let this sit, the better it'll be. So, I would suggest that if um, you do this, if you try this with dried ingredients, that you let it sit for hours or overnight maybe even, um, because it'll just get better and better as everything reconstitutes fully. Um, all the flavors will be released. So as you see, it still looks the same pretty much. It's a little deeper in color because I use the boiling water and so the green is not as bright from the tomatoes. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you over to the stove and we're gonna work on these pork chops. <laughs> and we're gonna add this to those pork chops while they cook. Let's get started. This salsa is good like this, or if you want to have a deeper, richer flavor, you can take what's in this bowl and get a clean skillet, add a little oil, and then pour this in there and let it cook up a little bit and it'll give it a really good flavor. But here I am just going to, I guess it would be the same premise as what I'm doing with it now, except for I'm doing this over meat. But I just wanted to mention that 
If you're really trying to be authentic in making your salsa, then, you know, that is the way to go about it is to um, cook it a little bit first and then let it come down to uh, room temperature or cool down and then use it with chips and whatever, however you're going to do it. Now I'm just going to add this other one to it because this was my first bowl. Well, no, not my first bowl. My first bowl is in the trash. That was my last attempt to get this right. And so I'm adding it to it, but it was already cooked is what I had cooked down. Um, that's why it's a different color than what I've already, than what I put in first. So you guys, I know this video is all over the place, but you know, I am experimenting and trying new things and I love doing that so I am going to cover this and I'm gonna let this cook I'm gonna turn my burner down and I'm gonna let this simmer for a good 20 minutes or so and I will be back to show you what it looks like So, you know what time it is. It is time for me to plate it up. I am gonna get this um, put on a plate with some rice and everything, and I will get back to you to give you my review. Okay, you guys, I am gonna try this. I'm first gonna try the rice by itself because I added something special to this rice. I added some of that uh, dried tomato leaves to this rice. Hmm, okay. Wow. That actually has really good flavor. It's a good addition to this rice. Mm. I like that. And now I'm going to try a pork chop. That too is really good. Mmm. <laughs> I think that worked out really well. Mm. I mean, this rice is really good. Okay. You guys, I think that, that would be worth a try for you. It's a little spicy. Because my son wanted it spicy. It's a little spicier than what I would do usually. But all in all, it's good. I wish I had somebody here that could try it and be like, <laughs> confirm what I'm saying. This was a winner, and um, I will see what the rest of my family say when they eat it, when they try it. I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to watch my videos. I'm not a, a professional chef or an expert in the things that I do. I just love flavor, and I just love food that tastes good. <laughs> so let me know down in the comments um, what you think. And... You guys, I keep looking at this plate because I'm ready to get off here so I can eat my dinner. <laughs> so thank you so much again for watching this video. And as always, God bless.